lovely to hang out for. Oh, there's a beer. Oh, jeez. Bit of a widow maker. Tracks the road beautifully. Welcome along guys. Well today I'm riding a bike I'm really excited about borrowing. This is the new Ducati Street Fighter V2. So of course I've ridden the V4 version extensively, done a lot of tests on the V4. I'll stick a card at the top there. But this is the V2. So this is basically based on the same platform as the Panigale V2. So the 955cc V-twin engine. Um, with a Street Fighter body on basically. So I found the V4 quite an aggressive bike, maybe perhaps too much for the road. This 150 horsepower Street Fighter V2 version could just be the perfect road companion. Well, join me and we will find out. Chop C, roll the intro. So loud this bike. I don't know how Ducati get their bikes through sort of Euro noise emissions. Listen to it. Oh, sounds absolutely wonderful. This is the Super Quadro engine, which is 153 horsepower, actually, two horsepower less than the, uh, the Panigale version. It's got a little bit more power, the Panigale version of this, and I think that is just because, only two horsepower, you know, nothing. That's 155. But I think just because of the retuning they've done for uh, a naked sort of street bike, it's slightly different power. Torque's the same, but this is very different from the engine in the Monster, the engine in the Hyper Motard. That engine is the Testa Stretta engine, and that only makes 115 horsepower and sort of slightly less torque for this engine as well but that engine the power is much you know, the torque and power is much lower down the rev range so that's more of a, 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 a an engine with more drive and punch this is much more of a performance engine the super quadro engine in this and power and maximum torque is much higher up the rev range so this is a real racy revy engine in this even though they're, they're basically almost the same capacity so now we've got that out of the way, what's it like to actually sit on and ride? Well, it's really, really comfortable. You know, the, the V4 version is, is, I'd say it's a little bit more cantered forward than the V4 version. It was very upright, the V4 version, but yeah, the, the pegs are at a really nice height, similar sort of height to the Super Duke I was riding. I will draw some comparisons with this to the Super Duke because they're actually a similar price to the Super Duke. This is just over £15,000 and the base Super Duke I think is around about the same money, more, maybe a little bit more expensive but very similar and of course they're both twins, they're both V-twin engines so you can draw a lot of similarities between this and the Super Duke so we will do that as part of this video and as I've just taken the Super Duke back last week to KTM it makes sort of perfect sense as well, it's fresh in my mind and if you want to see my Super Duke Evo review by the way it's up the top there, check the cards out. So the riding position is a bit less sporty feeling than the Super Duke but a little bit more sporty feeling than the V4 version I would say. The bars are at a really nice height, the seat feels comfortable you know it's it's a nice thing to ride this it's a lovely position to ride and i'm six foot two twenty stone and this you know this isn't a cramped bike for me so if you're a taller guy this also fits really well because of the way this engine makes its power it's definitely a rever things don't really start to happen until sort of seven thousand revs so it's unlike the super Duke, which is all about grunt and initial grunt off the throttle this is definitely one you've got to wind it up and thrash it but that's great fun on the road. I mean, 150 horsepower is a lot of power and you could still argue it's too much for the road, but it feels more manageable, obviously, than, than the V4 version, which is just insane. You know, this is a much better bike, I think, for the road. It's still got a good amount of torque. You know, if you get the sort of fourth above 3,000 revs, it's got a good amount of torque, but it's not super duke torque. It's definitely you've got to build the revs a little bit, but that's a lot of fun on this bike and this engine. It's a real screamer, this. Red line is 11,000 RPM, which is pretty high for a V-twin. Oh, L-twin. 
Brakes are very nice. This has got the M4 Brembo, so you know, again, this bike is £15,000, you know. It's based on the on the V2. It doesn't have the fancy stuff. You know, this isn't the yet. They don't do an S version of this bike yet. The spec of this is much lower. Shower fork, sack shot, M4 Brembos. You know, they're not Stylemas. They're not even M50s. But you do get a lovely Brembo master cylinder and a lovely Brembo clutch stay cylinder as well because it's hydraulic clutch, which is nice. It's not cable, and you've got some really nice feel to the controls and really nice levers on this as well but the brakes deliver a lot of power you know and a lot and a fair amount of feel as well but they're not up to the standard of the stylema setup but they're, they're perfectly adequate <laughs> sliding the rear in a little bit it's also got a slipper clutch by the way it's quite easy to hit the rev limiter on this because it pulls hard towards the top and the power really climbs and then you just hit the rev limiter so a few times I keep banging into the rev limiter on this even though it is at 11,000 rpm it feels like you've got more there it doesn't sort of tail off and then hit the rev limiter it pulls all the way to the limiter so you do tend to, to hit the limiter a little bit on this bike oh, that's all part of the fun isn't it it's a very agile machine it feels lighter than the Super Duke for sure the Super Duke, I think, is about 215 kilos wet. This is 200 wet, so it's 15 kilos lighter than the Super Duke, and it feels it. Even manoeuvring it around, it feels light. And to actually change direction, it changes direction quicker, I think, than the Super Duke as well. I know it's got sack suspension, so it's not got top of the line suspension, but it's, it's all set up quite, quite sporty. You know, it's definitely got a sporty feel to this bike. I don't know, we've joined a bit of a tail end of a of somebody's ride here. It's had a, a blade and a, what's that? SV650, is it in fact? That older P-Reg bike? What's this? What is that? A Suzuki? Yeah, is it a TL1000? They were meant to be a bit of an animal, weren't they? Those TL1000s. Bit of a Widowmaker. So the suspension is all quite a sporty feel. It's fully adjustable, of course. Of course it's all fully adjustable. This has sort of been set up pretty sporty, but it still feels plush, you know. You're not bottoming out over the big bumps. It may be sporty, but I really like how the suspension's been set up on this. Even with me, with the big fattier board, again, it works really well. It's not crashing over bumps. One of the things which really excels on this bike, and I think it's one of the best systems ever used is the quick shifter blipper it's so smooth on this it's actually smoother to use the quick shifter and blipper than to use the clutch <laughs> it's, it's that good oh there's a beer oh geez that's always a worry when you're coming down there it's lovely to hang off of it tracks the road beautifully it's got a really nice really good front end feel lovely front end on this it just feels so locked to the road i'm not sure whether this has the counter rotating engine again you know like the v4 i don't think so i think this is just a regular regular spinning engine but it really feels locked to the road this even like even i've got the wheelie control off first gear it will come up but you know the other gears it's quite locked down come on fellas let me show you how good this quick shifter blipper is. Second, even minimal throttle inputs, it's so smooth. Blipper. It's so lovely. On those stoppers, oh, loads of feel, loads of power. I tell you, I tell you. I, I much prefer this to the V4 version from a fun perspective. You know, you can exploit more of it on the road. Because it's not over 200 horsepower, you know, you can use it more for the road. It's, a, it's, a, it's more fun than the V4. Yeah, it is a little bit vibey being a big V-twin. It is. 
more vibey than the V4 version. I can't deny that. But it's not excessive. It's similar vibes, I'd say, actually, to the Super Duke. A little bit through the bars, a little bit through the actual bike and the seat. But I wouldn't say it's excessive. The whole engine feel, you know, and how easy it is to ride, how smooth it is around the, around the lower rev ranges, it's not, it doesn't feel quite as well polished as that new Gen 3 Super Duke. You know, the, as I said on that review, the throttle response on that bike is incredible. It's so precise. It's a little bit more lumpy than the Super Duke, if I'm being ultra critical about this machine, but it's still, again, perfectly acceptable. It's a load of fun this, an absolute load of fun to ride. Woo. As I say, that engine loves to be revved, it is a little bit flat, below sort of 7,000 revs, but you know, that's all part of the fun, I think, with this engine. Rev it, get the performance. from the bike though, the, the grip you have, the agility the bike's got, the sound of it, it's a wonderful thing. You can ride it very much like a sports bike, you know, on the front brake, but then the rear brake is quite nice as well, just to scrub off a little bit of speed give it a bit more control around the corners, but that suspension is very, very good. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It's a really good, fun bike to ride, this. Very, very good. Top marks. Top marks, Bologna. You've done a good. Let's talk a little bit about niggles. It's not a perfect motorcycle. It's not a perfect motorcycle. There's a little bit of vibration through the dashboard. That whole front cow moves around quite a lot. It seems to be a lot of movement on that front cow. You can't change things like traction control levels while you're riding. They're locked in and you can only adjust that when you're stopped by going right into the engine mode and adjusting it. Of course, you can go between street and sport and then a different level set between street and sport, but you know, there's no buttons just to adjust the traction on the fly. Slight criticism. It's a little bit vibey, a tiny little bit vibey. I could see why some might complain about that. Doesn't bother me too much. If you're taller, that wing mirror, it don't go any higher than that. So I'm a little bit restricted on my rear visibility. And I'd like to move that mirror up a little bit more, but it's sort of maxed out on the adjustment. So, a little bit of tweaking with the mirrors. I'd probably stick some sort of bar end mirror on it if, it if I had one of these anyway, so that wouldn't be too much of a concern. Um, the big, <laughs> I suppose the big one, and this is unbelievable really, but it's got no fuel gauge. It's got no cruise control, it's got no fuel gauge. Heated grips are an option, this doesn't have it, but there's no fuel gauge. It's 2022. This is a brand new bike out from Ducati. It doesn't have a fuel gauge. What are they thinking? It's got a 17 litre tank and it uses a lot less fuel than the V4 version. You can get 120 miles, 130 miles out of this, no issue. It's 80, 90 miles out of the V4 version of this bike. Ridiculous. But no fuel gauge. I don't understand it. Heat from the rear. I mean, it's about 15 degrees today, 15, 16 degrees. I've got my Knox riding jeans on and I can feel a little bit of temperature around my backside. Not excessive. The, the seat feels warm, but it's not excessive heat. It's perfectly pleasant heat at this point. I mean, if you're out in 30 degree temperatures, then maybe that would become a little bit of an issue, but it's perfectly fine in these conditions and like I say I've actually got riding jeans on so if you're in leathers you would not notice that. What we'd do I think it would be rude not to just to give it one of my 0-60 tests with my draggy. 
I know we had a big disappointment with the Super Duke the other week. I couldn't get a reading. So I'm hoping it's going to work today. So let's see how she performs on a little 0-60 launch. Hey, yeah. Uh, afternoon. Was it afternoon yet? Yeah, is it still morning? No idea what the time is. <laughs> Yeah. 11.37. 11.37, thank you very much. Here is my draggy. This is magnetised, so you can only stick this to sort of steel. It won't stick to any more plastic, obviously. And I've, I've really struggled to find anywhere on this bike where, where it will stick to. Everything is aluminium, apart from the petrol tank. So as a reminder, the best internal combustion engine time we've done, it was with the Super Duke GT which did it in a 3.93 seconds. Let's see how the Panagali, Panagali Street Fighter V2 gets on. Well, that was a little bit rubbish. First attempt. Let's try again. I know I could do better than that, but you know, as I've said, you get it's two attempts at it, you know. So the first attempt was a 4.9, pretty abysmal. The second attempt was a 4.2, but it was slightly uphill there. 4.2 seconds. I could definitely do better than that. You know, I was a little bit slow away. It had quite a nice clutch feel, so I think it was 100% down to the rider. But official time is 4.2 seconds, but it's definitely more in it than that. So there she is, the V2 Street Fighter. Let's have a little bit of a closer look. So up front, you've got Brembo M4 calipers, I think these are. So they're not the Stylemas, you know, these are a lower spec Brembo caliper, but work really well on this. There's not too much, too many problems with the brakes on this. Maybe not quite as much feel as full on Stylemas, but they deliver a lot of power, a fair amount of feel. Quite happy with those. We have Showa big piston forks on this, so none of that gold bling, and I don't think it suffers too much from it. A nice sporty feel from the front end on this machine. The front end of the bike, there it is, the distinctive V sort of uh, running light that the Street Fighter has, the same as the V4 version. Probably my sort of biggest build quality issue with this bike is just how much this front end waggles around. I mean, it really waggles around quite a lot and bounces and it make, and the screen even vibrates a little bit as well. There's a lot of movement on that front piece. Because of course the bike doesn't have fairing, what Ducati have done, they've created some sort of plasticky infill panels here to sort of enclose the engine a little bit because of course the, you know, the full panny version's got full fairing. So you've got a little bit of plastic sort of coverings to hide sort of the more unattractive pieces of the engine. You've also got a bit of aluminium trim down the, down the front here, like the V4 version, but there's no wings standard on this. There's little blanking plates here, where I think you can attach the wings if you want to buy them, but the wings are separate and then after a Ducati add-on, you don't get any wings standard. Something that my friend, the Mitterdam Flyer, pointed out is the oil fill on this bike is completely covered by all of the rear master cylinder gubbins. So to actually fill the oil, and even just to remove the cap, would be quite a fiddly affair. Rear sack suspension, so again, no gold bling. Well, it's gold, but and it's sort of semi-bling. Gold semi-bling with a sax rear shock. One of my favourite design pieces with the Panagales and the Street Fighter is this side stand. The side stand is like pure bike porn. It's, it's like a billet side, I don't think it is billet, but it looks like a billet side stand. So often on bikes, the side stand is just a bit of pig iron. It's an afterthought, but with a Ducati, you get this lovely sort of design side stand. I've got a lot of time for that. Let's have a little look at that screen. As I say, it's a fairly small screen on this bike. It's not massive. It's the same screen, which is on the V2 Panigale, but it's a smaller, lower resolution screen than what is on the V4 version and the, uh, the V4 Panigales as well. The bike is fully loaded with tech. If we go into the settings menu, you've got three modes, sport, road, uh, sport, road and wet. And you can then go into each of these settings and customize it to your heart's content. Riding modes, 
sport here we go we can customize what we have so you can adjust engine output you can adjust whether the, the abs levels which is quite a nice little feature road or track i like that you can adjust your traction control you know but not on the fly you've got to go there's no sort of button to adjust it on the fly you can only do it by going into this menu and sort of so it's something you can only do it when you're stopped as well so to change the traction levels you have to stop and be in neutral so you know you can adjust that from performance up to safe and stable so I, i'm going to leave it slightly edged towards the performance wheelie control you can turn on or off i've got it off of course engine braking controls you can adjust how much engine braking you've got from sort of three levels of engine braking again that's a nice feature quick shifter on or off brilliant quick shifter on this bike fantastic and that's it so you've got a little bit of customization of these riding modes but you can only customize them when you're stopped so there we go the street fighter v2 a lovely lovely looking machine i think you agree let's jump back on so to summarize the v2 street fighter i think is one of the best ducatis most fun ducatis available to buy this super quattro engine is a fantastic power plant loads of revs loads of fun i loved it in the panigale v2 and in this you've just got that comfortable riding position so you can make the most out of that engine in comfort it's a brilliant unit i mean 955 cc 153 horsepower you know it, it's an impressive thing it really is and uh, i do love this bike i think this street fighter is a bike which rewards when you really push it on and you chuck it around you you know you 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 throw it through a set of twisty roads and you really give it some beanage that that's when it rewards perhaps if you're want to ride slower you know you're a bit less of a hooligan than me you're perhaps not going to get the best out of this bike it's a bike it's a real rider's bike you know put it through a set of twisties it won't disappoint the feedback the chassis on this is brilliant really really good even without the olids you know without the lightweight wheels it's still brilliant for a set of twisties and it feels light as well it really does feel like this even compared to like the super Duke, you can tell it's more of a bit more of a middleweight this there's less weight there even though it's only 15 kilos on paper wherever that weight is distributed it just feels lighter so uh, yeah it's uh, it's impressed me this i have to say so there we go guys thanks for watching as always and i'll see you on the next video cheers this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. <laughs>